Welcome to our next unit, which will cover biomes. So in this section, we will discuss the different types of biomes found throughout the world. And the bi each biome is described by the vegetation that inhabits it, the temperature, and the precipitation that that biome uh, receives. You can see a kind of preview of the different types of bio, or at least some of the different types of biomes that we will be talking about during this section or during this unit uh, on this picture right here. So we've got some tropical rainforests, some temperate forests or decid temperate deciduous forests, uh, tundra, and we'll be going into all of these in more depth as we continue. These are just some of the ones that we're going to uh, talk about in this unit. So the first question we should ask is, what is a biome? And the book, in the book, uh, the definition that they give us is that biomes are large regions characterized by a specific type of climate and certain types of plants and animal communities. Now, when they say large regions, some of these regions are huge, and some are uh, a little more self-contained. We'll get into this a little, uh, a little more later on, but uh, areas of tropical rainforest are just huge, massive areas. And as we learned in our land use section, or our land use unit, uh, some of these types of biomes, or some of these regions, are threatened for one reason or another. Uh, but many of these biomes, many of these uh, regions, are, are just massive expanses of land, and they're just very, very large. And they're characterized by the climate. So what is the temperature? What is the precipitation uh, for certain plants? What, is, what kind of sunlight are they receiving? Uh, and it's also going to be characterized by whatever plants are able to live in that environment and then whatever animals are able to live in that environment as well. And each biome... Uh, is made of many individual ecosystems. So within each biome, there are, or within each region, there are many different ecosystems that we can find. So for example, in a tropical rainforest, you would have an ecosystem on the floor, uh, on the forest floor. You would have another slightly different or slightly more adapted ecosystem kind of in the tree or along the tree trunk. And then there would be at least a third ecosystem that would be along the canopy of those trees, so in the branches themselves. So as we've already said, biomes are described by the vegetation that you find there. And biomes are described by their vegetation because the plants that grow in certain regions or in a specific area are one of the most noticeable characteristics of that region. So when you walk into a rainforest, you're definitely going to see trees, but you may not necessarily see all of the animals that are living in that area as well. But one thing that you can count on with plants, for the most part, is they're not going to get up and walk away. So the, the plants that are there are going to be used to classify or describe this biome because they do not move. They're going to be rooted in place. And whatever plants are growing in that area, they will help determine what other organisms can live in that area or can live in that ecosystem. So, for example, mahogany trees, uh, mahogany is a... Is a type of wood that is used to make very, very nice furniture and um, other things like that. But these mahogany trees grow in tropical rainforests because they are adapted to that kind of wet, hot environment. And they could not survive further north or uh, at a higher elevation, which we'll go into later, but they could not survive colder, drier weather. Now, the organisms that depend on those mahogany trees, the organisms that feed off of their leaves or off of the 
uh, wood in their stems or out of off of the sugars that they produce, the organisms that depend on those things from those trees have to live where the mahogany trees are. So that's what we mean when we say the plants that grow in an area determine the other organisms that can live there. And the plants, as well as those other organisms, are going to have uh, characteristics and kind of specialized structures or features, uh, which we're going to call adaptations, that allow the plant to survive in that biome. So, for example, uh, we talked about the mahogany trees. They could not survive in a cold or in a dry environment, but mahogany trees can survive very well in tropical rainforest. So these adaptations that we're talking about include the size, the shape, and the color, at times, the, sometimes the color, of the trees or of the leaves. So another example that we have is plants in tundra, and tundra is a, bi is a type of biome that we're going to get into a little bit later, but tundra tends to be cold and dry. So plants that are in tundra, or that live in tundra, tend to be short because they don't usually get enough water to grow larger. However, some of those plants are well adapted or are able to survive much better than other plants, even though there is not a whole lot of water in that area. So maybe a better example would be desert plants, so such as cactus. Cactus. These plants are very, very good at finding and storing water in very dry environments. And one of the adaptations that cactus uh, plants have are these special leaves that just hold on to water and they're covered in a very waxy kind of shell um, or just a very waxy layer which prevents water or it helps to prevent water from evaporating. And so it helps the cactus to conserve and retain water in an area that doesn't usually receive a whole lot of rain. So now I'd like you to think back to what I said just a moment ago at the beginning of this, uh, of this video lecture, that these biomes are just massive, massive areas. And so this, this world map here is just meant to help kind of illustrate that point. And so, for example, the northeast part of the United States, so right in this area here, would be categorized or classified as temperate forest. So, although at times, because we have so many cities on the east coast, it may not look like or it may not strike you as forest land, that is what it is categorized as, because historically there were quite a few, the, the whole kind of east coast was just this big forest that when people first came to this country, that's where they started cutting down trees and building their homes, was from the trees that grew in those forests. And then right next to that, you can see that we have this right here, this kind of light blue area, temperate grassland. So in the middle of the country, uh, which is where I did my graduate school in St. Louis, Missouri, I was in kind of the heart of that temperate grassland. And when you go there, it's a, it's a very kind of flat area, and it's just hills and hills and hills, or, you know, fields and fields and fields, of corn and other types of grasses. Then you can see up here we have polar ice. 
ice. So there's not really a whole lot going on in those regions. Uh, there's not a whole lot of plant life, and there's not a whole lot of animal life. Maybe some polar bears but, and some seals, but there's not a whole lot going on there. However, in the region right next to that, so in this kind of light brown color here, and even over here, we've got tundra. And tundra is a type of biome that is kind of characterized by colder temperatures because you can see it's right near the Arctic or the polar ice. It's right near that super cold area. But this tundra has a good deal or a good amount, comparatively speaking, of plant and animal life. So in tundra, because it's so cold, the soil tends to be frozen for most of the year. However, there are some, you know, small plants or s very, very small uh, trees are able to obtain the water they need and reproduce during a very small window. And it's approximately two months in the summer where it's warm enough for plants uh, to get the moisture that they need, the water that they need, and it's enough time for them to reproduce and set, you know, make flowers and then put seed down for the next year. So these plants are adapted to this type of environment, to this cold and sort of frozen type of environment, and so they're able to survive quite nicely. And one of the other most kind of noticeable or most well-known types of biomes would be the desert biome. And you can see we have two huge deserts, one in Africa and then one in Australia. And here we've got the Sahara Desert, which I'm sure most of you have heard of before. But it's one of the largest, if not the largest, desert in the world. It covers over 9,400,000 kilometers squared. Or... 3,600,000 miles squared. That, and a fun little fact, it is almost as large as the entire United States. The United States is approximately 9,900,000 kilometers squared, or 3,800,000 kilometers squared. So it's not quite as large as the whole United States, but it's close. And speaking of the United States, in this area here, we have four main deserts. We've got the Great Basin Desert, the Sonoran Desert, the Mojave Desert, and the Chihuahuan Desert. Now, these deserts are not anywhere near as large as the Sahara, but we still have a desert region in the United States. And now we ask, how did these biomes come to be? How did these different regions develop? And why are certain organisms in those regions? So we've already said that certain organisms are adapted to, that, to their specific region. But what is it that they adapt to? Well, it's the climate. The climate is the average weather conditions, which would include humidity, temperature, precipitation, winds, so the amount of wind, and I would even say sunlight to an extent, but not necessarily. So it's the average weather conditions in an area over a long period of time. 
and this is the main factor that determines which plants can grow in a certain area. And that is what defines the biome. So, as we said before, it's the plants in a region that define or characterize the biome. And certain plants cannot tolerate or cannot exist outside of certain conditions. And so these conditions are typically temperature, precipitation, wind, and humidity. As we saw on the previous slide, temperature and precipitation, so amount of rainfall are the two most important factors or uh, conditions that determine a region's climate. And most organisms, so most animals, most plants, are adapted to live within a range. So they don't have to live at a specific or a precise temperature or uh, set of conditions usually, but they can live in a range. So if you were to look at a thermometer, if it got this hot, the organism could not survive. And if it gets this cold, the organism cannot survive. But everywhere in here is okay. So, for example, if anyone has ever had a fish tank, you will know that you need to keep the temperature of the water a certain, or uh, over a range. You need to keep it within a certain range. So you can't make it too cold or too hot. Because too cold and the fish will freeze, too hot and they will just cook up. But in that middle area, in that range, they do just fine. And plants are the same way. Plants can usually tolerate, like we're seeing outside, they can tolerate warmer temperatures, but not too, too hot, or they start to die off, and not too, too cold, or the leaves start to die and fall off. Now, precipitation is another limiting factor. So the amount of rainfall or the amount of water that is available for these organisms to get is another thing that will limit what can exist in a particular biome. And a general rule is the bigger the animal or the bigger the organism, the more water it will need. So a great big polar bear or a great big grizzly bear will need a lot more water than a little mouse or a little snake, something like that. Just like animals, plants, uh, the larger the plant, the more water it's going to need. And so biomes that do not receive enough rainfall or enough precipitation to support these large trees will be dominated or will be inhabited by very small trees or shrubs and grasses. And a shrub 
is different from a tree because it usually has many stems and it is usually under 20 feet tall. So it has many stems that come out of the ground with roots, whereas a tree usually just has one main stem or the trunk, and they're usually less than 20 feet tall or six meters. In biomes where rainfall is not frequent, like deserts and sometimes tundra, the vegetation is mostly cactus, desert shrub, or in the case of tundra, just these very, very small, small shrubs or small uh, grasses. And even in some extreme cases, when there is no rainfall, no matter what the temperature is, no plants can survive because no water equals death for plants. And in general, the higher the temperature and the more precipitation that an area gets, the taller and denser the vegetation is. So an area with high temperatures and high levels of precipitation there will be a lot of plant life and a lot of vegetation, which is essentially plant life. So how do biomes vary across, say, a continent? What is it that makes these, or that gives these different climates? Well, climate varies, or climate... changes with changes in latitude and altitude. Latitude is the distance north or south of the equator. And this is expressed or measured in degrees. So if you look at a map or at a globe, you'll see these lines going across sideways. These are the latitude lines. And I'm sure you've all heard before, the equator is that center latitude line, and we read it as zero degrees. And then whether you go up or down, so whether you go this way from zero or this way, you measure it in degrees away from the equator, so degrees away from zero, either positive or negative. Altitude is the height of an object above a reference point. So sea level is pretty much the generalized or universal um, reference point. And when we talk about altitude, we've got the surface of the Earth, and then say we've got a mountain that comes out of the earth. This measurement here is the, is the altitude. And in general, the higher you are, the colder it gets. So the top of that mountain is going to be a lot colder. And as you go down the mountain, the warmer it gets. So what does this picture show us? This little diagram shows us essentially what or how 
temperature and precipitation influence the biome. So you have tropical rainforest down here, and these are both hot and wet. So there's a lot of rain, hence the rainforest, and it's also very, very warm. And as the temperature decreases, so as the temperature goes down in this direction, which is strange because it's actually going up in this picture, but as temperature decreases, as it gets colder, you move from tropical rainforest to temperate forest to taiga and to tundra. And as it gets drier, as you get less moisture, less precipitation, less water, you move from tropical rainforest to savanna to desert. And so if we break this part, or break this diagram apart, if we have this region here, which is this temperature range, this temperature range right here, we can see that we could have tropical rainforest, savanna, or desert. And the thing that determines that is not so much the temperature, but it's the amount of moisture available, the amount of water available. And so if we look at this next one, this temperate region, so we're looking at the temperature from here to here, so this region in here, you can see that it's the moisture that affects or that determines whether it will be temperate forest, temperate grassland, or desert. And then you've got taiga and tundra, and eventually you would have ice. But as you can see, or what this graph or what this diagram is trying to show is that it is both temperature and precipitation that determines what type of biome will be there or what type of biome will exist. So as latitude and altitude increase, so as we move up a mountain, for example, the biomes and the vegetation change. So that is why we see, for example, trees of a tropical rainforest grow closer to the equator because that is the area of optimal temperature and precipitation. While mosses and lichens, mosses are small, flowerless plants that are usually between one and 10 centimeters tall. So they're very, very small, very short plants. And lichens, which are symbiotic organisms, so it's a fungus and living with a type of uh, either algae or bacteria, not that important, but mosses and lichens tend to grow closer to the poles, uh, either North Pole or South Pole, where it is colder uh, because they are adapted to that colder environment and they don't need as much water or they are better able at obtaining water from a region that doesn't get a whole lot of precipitation. And then we have the temperate region, which we've talked about before. And so in the United States, we've got temperate forests, temperate grasslands, 
So these are areas that have moderate temperatures. So they will be freezing at times, but not for too long. And so plants are still able to obtain the right amount or the amount of water that they need. And it also does not usually get too hot. And so they do not usually get cooked or get killed by the heat in the summertime. And so these areas have a kind of mild or medium or moderate uh, temperature and they're usually accompanied by fertile soil that is ideal or that's very good for human beings for uh, agricultural purposes, so for growing our foods. So one final diagram, and this was the one we saw on that very first slide, but just to help uh, illustrate this point one more time, as you go up, as your altitude increases f from sea level, the temperature goes down. So when altitude increases, temperature decreases. And latitude, so as you move from the equator, And as you move either north or south, but as you move away from the equator, it also tends to get colder and usually drier. So the tundra does not, as we said before, tundra does not have as much water or as much precipitation as tropical rainforest. So this will conclude section one, or lecture one, of this unit and the next, or the next lecture we will start with some of the specific biomes like tropical rainforests.